Hey, I'm Daniel from Ratings.com. Today we'll be doing a review of the Bose Smart Soundbar 900. We'll be evaluating it on our standardized test bench to see how it performs and if you should buy it. The 900 is the highest end soundbar from Bose. It's either available as a standalone bar for those who want a clean setup with a single self-contained device, or you can purchase an external sub, which they call the base module, and or surround speakers. We'll be focusing this review on the standalone bar, but we did also buy and test the optional extras, so we'll talk about their impact throughout. Let's start with the design. The bar itself is quite wide, just a bit narrower than a 55-inch TV. The speaker grille extends all of the way around the sides of the soundbar, hiding the position of the speakers. This soundbar uses what Bose calls phase guide, though, basically to project sound outwards from the bar at an angle, rather than directly in front. This is intended to produce a more immersive soundstage to make the bar feel wider than it actually is, but we'll check this out when we get to the sound testing part of the review. The bar itself appears as a 5.0.2 setup. Basically, you have the standard left, right, center, and then also left and right surrounds, making five channels, and an additional two upfiring channels that you can see on top of the bar. If you get the base module, then it connects wirelessly to the bar, but if you use a different sub, then there is a wired connection. If you go with the satellites, then they're connected wirelessly and just require power, but the power bricks are bigger than the satellites themselves. This also is a testament to how surprisingly small the satellites are though, for a soundbar that's this large. As far as the inputs to the bar go, if you have some older devices, then you can use the optical input, but for the best experience, connect it via HDMI to your TV using the eARC or extended audio return channel for the best format and feature support, which we'll talk about later. Now let's take a look at the tests. We'll start with how it sounds. The frequency response is a way of measuring the soundbar's performance across the auditory range. This graph shows 48 measurements in different positions, and the dotted line target result is great for a soundbar that most people consider neutral, so voices won't be drowned out with too much boomy bass, for example. Now, a problem here is that how a soundbar sounds depends on the room that it's in. Close walls result in more bass buildup, for example. The Bose 900 can correct for this, though, through a feature advertised as Adapter Q. Basically, you wear a headset connected to the bar, and the soundbar adapts to your room, and this adaptation is saved, so when you watch movies or listen to music, the soundbar sounds the way that they want it, regardless of the room. This allows the soundbar to sound great and neutral in our room as well as yours. It's one of the best we've tested, which results in a great sound for music or movies. If we look at the bass portion on the left-hand side of this graph, it's alright with just the bar, but if you really want deep rumbly explosions, then you do need to purchase the sub. If you want to tweak the sound to your preference, there are basic controls within the app to adjust the treble or bass levels, but unfortunately there's no EQ feature to really customize how it sounds. It's a good thing the Adapt EQ does a great job at producing a sound that most people are going to really like. A good sound stage is important as your hearing recognizes spatial cues, so the bar needs to sound like the speakers are where they are supposed to be. For listening to music especially, the stereo sound stage is especially important. The soundbar produces a great result. The soundbar itself is quite wide, so it's already pretty good to begin with, and there are clear left and right channels. But on top of this, the soundbar actually directs the sound out the sides rather than directly in front. This means the sound actually appears even wider than the bar, but it unfortunately means it also sounds a bit unnatural, and also sounds like it lacks some focus when trying to pinpoint objects at the edges of the soundstage. It's still great overall though. Good performance with the center channel is important when depicting objects or sounds from directly in front. For example, when watching movies, dialogue often comes through the center. The Smart Soundbar 900 does have a dedicated center channel as expected, and it performs really well with a neutral sound, so voices are clear and detailed. Now, if you want to use the soundbar for 5.1 content like movies or for gaming, then a clear and well-balanced sound is important. If you don't buy the surrounds and only have the standalone bar, then the bar instead needs to project sounds to appear like it's coming from the sides. It does a decent job at this with its side firing and up firing drivers, but it's definitely not as immersive as having discrete speakers for 5.1 content. You can remedy this by purchasing the surrounds, and it does do a good job for realistic sounding and positioning 5.1 content. Now for content with height channels, such as when watching movies that have Atmos, there's no option to put the speakers up high. So instead, the soundbar needs to bounce sound from the ceiling with upfiring speakers to make it appear from above. But positioning is lacking, so you can't pinpoint a helicopter that's flying above you in a movie, for example. 
Adding the surrounds helps with this positioning and the result is actually really great even though the satellites themselves aren't up firing. So it's another point for the surrounds which we'll talk about more at the end. This soundbar supports EARC or an extended audio return channel to play sound from your TV through the soundbar. The E part of EARC means that it supports higher bandwidth audio with things like higher channel counts or just formats that need more bandwidth. With Dolby formats it works well, including Dolby True HD, which is often used for object-based formats in movies. Unfortunately it doesn't support any of the common DTS formats though, which is a bit surprising and can be limiting as they are also commonly used for movies. Now, a low latency is important for synchronization between what you see on the screen and what you hear. It's important to note though that it can technically vary on a whole bunch of factors, like the specific signal, but we've found these results to be well representative. Soundbars that have low latency tend to do a good job regardless of the signal, for example. The result for this soundbar is great and it is consistent regardless of if you're using ARC directly from a TV or the optical input. Some people like to connect devices directly to their soundbar and then pass through the signal to their TV. This soundbar doesn't have a direct HDMI input, so this isn't an option though. The remote that comes with the soundbar is fairly basic, but works well. You can quickly change between sources and adjust the volume. The app is necessary for more advanced adjustments though. On the bar, there's an option to disable the microphone, but if you leave it enabled, then you can use the Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. So this brings us to the main question, should you buy the soundbar? It's an impressive bar with great sound that adapts to your room and a surprisingly good soundstage for music. It's expensive though, especially when you start considering the optional sub and satellites. If you want a standalone bar for a minimalistic audio setup, then the Bose 900 is a great option, but it comes at a premium price. The sub does offer noticeable improvements too for those who want deep, rumbly bass. If you plan to watch a lot of movies and want an immersive experience, then the satellites do help significantly, both for 5.1 sounds from around you, but also if you want to get an improved object positioning in Atmos content. It's probably not worth going down this route though, because at this point, you might as well go with the Samsung HW-Q950A that is also a full dedicated setup with similar performance, but a lower price. Mm -hmm.